Good morning. John begins his gospel in this way. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was light and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Confusing? A little bit. Sure it is. John starts his gospel by paralleling the creation account in Genesis 1. But he tells a different account of creation. One of recreation. But don't get caught up in the how. Because God is an effective communicator. And he's not trying to tell you the how. He's telling you the who. Who is he talking about? He keeps writing, but we're going to skip to verse 9. It says, The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, he believed, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. John picks right back up in verse 9 with, what, with the word, but he refers to him as the light, the true light, the light of the world. We know him to be Jesus. And John says that Jesus came to his people, the Jews, but the Jews rejecting, rejected him. They did not receive him as the long-awaited and long-promised Messiah. That would come into the world. But John says those who did believe in him. Those who did receive him. He gave them the greatest privilege of all. To be called children of God. And then he says. And the word became flesh. And dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory is the, of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. A beautiful, beautiful passage of Scripture here. A great piece of, of theology describing what Jesus has done or what the Father was doing through Jesus. We call what John is writing about here the incarnation. A Latin word that simply means in the flesh or to put on the flesh. And Jesus, the Son of God, becomes flesh. The question is not how. We can get caught up in the how. You're never going to find the reason on how. What John is telling us is the who. Because when John says, and we have seen his glory, we wonder how, but the ancient Jewish mind doesn't wonder how. John's telling them who this is. <clears throat> Because the ancient Jewish mind would have gone back far, far in the past into a very, very particular moment in their history. If you have your Bibles, turn to Exodus chapter 19. In Exodus 19, Israel has camped at the base of Mount Sinai and they have entered into a covenant relationship with God and they have gathered around the mountain and here's what takes place Exodus 19 starting in verse 16 on the morning of the third day there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast so that all the people in the camp trembled the people of Israel, they witnessed this. They saw this thick cloud of darkness and, and they heard the thunders and the lightnings and the fire. And then verse 17 says, Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God and they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended on it in fire. And the smoke of it went up like the smoke of a kiln, and the whole mountain trembled greatly. And as the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him in the thunder. What a sight. 
Not only did they see this, but they heard it. And the mountain that they were gathered around, I would assume probably the the ground that they stood on, it, it trembled. And the people trembled with it. And 40 days or so later, while Moses was still on the mountain, the people got tired and the people got weary and they, they, they made a golden calf and they worshipped it. And they proclaimed, oh, the God who brought us out of the land of Egypt. And God's anger burned greatly. And Moses interceded on their behalf. And God's anger, was, uh, God's anger went away as Moses interceded. And quickly after that, Moses makes a very bold and a very gutty, gut, gutsy statement as he says in Exodus 33 and verse 18. He says to the Lord, show me your glory. I want to see you. If I'm going to lead these people from here and then lead them into the promised land, Lord, I want to know you're going to be with me. I want to see your glory. And this is where the Jewish mind would have gone back to this very moment in time. I want to see your glory. And Exodus 33, 19 and 20 says, <clears throat> and he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and show mercy in whom I will show mercy. But he said, you cannot see my face for man shall not see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, there's a place by where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock and I will cover you with my hand until I pass by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. And the very next day, it happens. And the Lord descended on the mountain and stood with him, that is Moses there, <clears throat> and proclaimed the name of the Lord. He said, the, the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. But who will by no means clear the guilty. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children of the third and the fourth generation. This is what the Jewish mind would have thought of. This man Jesus is the glory of God. The one that descended upon the mountain the one that gave us the law of Moses. And so John writes, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have seen his glory. Glory is the only son from the father full of grace and truth. John is not telling us how, he's telling us who is in, who this man is. John is claiming the God who descended on Mount Sinai in thick cloud of darkness and smoke and there were thundering and lightning and fire and caused the mountain and the ground to tremble he's saying the God that descended on this mountain walked off the mountain in the man Jesus and has revealed to us the glory of God his grace and his truth and his love and his mercy and his forgiveness he came to rescue us. And Paul would put it this way. Though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Feel the magnitude of the incarnation of God becoming flesh. And Jesus revealing the glory 
of God. The Creator left His throne in glory, entered His creation, and gave His life a ransom for us. He came so that you might live. Will you give Him your life as a living sacrifice? He died for you so that you could die and live forever. Will you give Him your life? This morning, if you're not yet a child of God, you can become one this morning. You can put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior by repenting of your sins, being immersed in the waters of baptism for the forgiveness of your sins, raised to walk a new creature. Those that received Him, He gave the gift of becoming children of God. That's exactly how you become a child of God. If you're already a child of God, but maybe you've not been living the way that you're supposed to live. Maybe you've not been following Jesus the way that you're supposed to. The Father's just, and He's faithful, and He's loving. And He's standing with His arms wide open, ready to receive you back as one of His children. All you have to do is come to Him with a repentant heart. This morning, if you're ready to respond to the Lord's invitation, we give you that opportunity as we stand and as we sing.